In this Circuits of the Past video, we'll show you 10 pre-war Grand Prix tracks. But first, what do we mean by pre-war Grand Prix tracks? Well, by pre-war we mean a closed permanent or street circuit which was used for Grand Prix racing before World War II. The first ever Grand Prix was held in 1906 at Le Mans, today best known for its annual 24-hour race. The last ever pre-war Grand Prix was held in September of 1939 at the Kalamegdon Park in Belgrade. Number 10. Avis. The Avis opened in 1921 and was one of the fastest circuits in the world. Two very long straights connected with an artificial loop on both sides. It was an experimental multiple lane highway that could be used as a racing track too. The original Avis was 19.569 kilometres, or 12.160 miles, long and hosted the 1926 German Grand Prix. After a reconstruction in 1936, it was reopened again in 1937, where it hosted the inaugural Berlin Grand Prix in 1937. Interestingly, during that 1936 reconstruction, the famous Wall of Death was built, a huge high-banked version of the Northern Loop. A similar corner was planned to replace the Southern Loop too, and the works were already underway and started when World War II broke out. Today you can still see the remains of the unfinished South Corner. After World War II broke out, the Avis was used two more times for the German Grand Prix. The first was in 1954, when there was a Formula 1 race at the Avis which did not count towards the World Championship. However, for political reasons, in 1959, two years before the Berlin Wall was built, the German Grand Prix was held at the Avis once again to give the people in the Russian occupation zone the opportunity to visit the Grand Prix. But the Avis, with its Hyde Bank corner, was found too dangerous for Formula One. In 1967, the Wall of Death was demolished and replaced by a flat corner. But the German Grand Prix simply never returned. After that, the Avis was used for Formula 3 and touring car races, but in 1998 it was found too dangerous for all racing entirely. Moreover, not too far from Berlin, a brand new permanent circuit was being built, the Lausitzring. So that resulted in the closure of the Avis in total for racing. In 1999, there was a one finale event to say goodbye to the old Avis. However, the grandstand and control tower are still there today. Many tourists are surprised to see a grandstand along the highway when they enter Berlin now, especially if they've got no clue of its history. Number 9. Sitges Terramar The Sitges Terramar circuit opened in 1922 near the seaside town of Sitges Terramar, not too far from Barcelona. It was a private initiative from millionaire and local race hero Frick Armagna. The track was an oval with a huge banking of 66 degrees. It was 2 kilometres long, which was about 1.2 miles. A strange detail was that the oval had a right kink in its back straight. Sitges Terramar was the first permanent racing circuit in Spain, and in 1923 it hosted the first ever Spanish Grand Prix, which was won by Albert Devo in his Sunbeam. However, the racetrack was not a financial success. Bills were not paid, and as a result, it was shunned by international series. In 1925, Bugatti driver Edgar Morowitz bought the site. He caused short recovery for the Sitges Terramar circuit to begin, but when in 1936 the Spanish Civil War broke out, the track closed and was never reopened again. At least, not as a racetrack. In 2008, Herman visited the abandoned racetrack. It took Herman quite a lot of effort to get permission by the then owners at the time to get some pictures. And that's because it had been turned into an agricultural area and the owner was not too happy with motorsport fans who wanted to come to his property. Today it's changed ownership again and there's a horse race track inside the high banked oval. And there are plans to preserve the banked track and rent it to car manufacturers for presentations. Number 8. Brno Meserik The street circuit near Brno, the capital of the Czech region Moravia, was used for the first time on the 28th of September 1930 to host the first ever Grand Prix of Czechoslovakia. The race was won by German Hermann zu Leningen in his Bugatti. We know this track best as the Brno circuit, but the official name was 
Mazarukov Okra, which I've probably butchered, which means Mazarak Circuit. The track was 29.41 kilometers long, which is 18.1 miles, and it was driven anti-clockwise. After 1930, the Grand Prix of Czechoslovakia was held six more times. The last one was in 1937. After the war, there was one more Grand Prix at Brno at 1949. That was on a redesigned layout, however. The start-finish was still in the same place, but the driving direction was changed from anti-clockwise to clockwise. The track was also much shorter. Because the new communist regime found car racing bogus, car racing was banned for the next few decades. Since then, there have only been motorcycle races at Brno. After several modifications, the brno mazarek circuit was replaced by a permanent racetrack in 1987. Today there are still two control towers and the pits of the old circuit, and you can still drive most of the old versions of the brno mazarek street circuit today. Number 7. Spa-Francorchamps By the name Spa-Francorchamps, most people would think about the current Formula 1 track with its challenging corners and huge elevation changes. But Spa... <laughs> it has a long old history, almost as long as the circuit itself. Spa-Francorchamps was originally a 14.9 km or 9.3 mile long street circuit, which was used for the first time in 1922 for motorcycle races. Actually, the first race took place in 1921, or it should have done at least, but that event was cancelled because of a lack of competitors. There was only one person signed up. God, even I could have won that. In 1925, Spa hosted the Belgian Grand Prix for the very first time, and it followed with seven more Grand Prix. The last pre-war Grand Prix was in 1939. That near a new corner was introduced, which is still very famous today, only under the wrong name. Guess who? Those years, Spa-Francorchamps mainly wanted to be a fast circuit. So for the 1939 Grand Prix, they cut off the Eau Rouge corner and the Ancien Douane hairpin and replaced it with a fast artificial corner instead. But because the new corner was very steep, they baptised it Radion, which meant steep road. Strangely enough, many people think that the name of this steep corner is actually Eau Rouge, while the actual Eau Rouge corner was abandoned in 1939. More about this name confusion can be found in our video, Eau Rouge or Radion. The love story between Spa-Francorchamps and the Belgian Grand Prix continues long after World War II. In 1947, the Grand Prix returned racing there, and in 1950, it's been on the Formula One calendar. The last Grand Prix on the old circuit was held in 1970, then the Belgian Grand Prix moved to Nivelle and Zolder. In 1979, the new Spa-Francorchamps circuit opened with a new layout of 6.9 kilometers or 4.3 miles, which is roughly half the length of the original track. Since the year 2000, Spa has become a fully permanent racetrack and is still the favorite of many drivers. However, the future of the Belgian Grand Prix has been uncertain for a little while recently, and it could be removed from the F1 calendar after 2023. Number six. Pescara. The circuit was operational from 1924 right the way up to 1961, and Pescara was a 25.578 kilometer long circuit, about 15.894 miles, just in case you're interested. Between 1924 and 1939, it hosted 16 Grand Prix races under the name Copa Asabo. Because there was already an Italian Grand Prix at Monza, the Grand Prix at Pescara was given another name. Giacomo Asabo, a prominent fascist politician, constructed this race in the memory for his late brother, Tito Asabo, a war hero from the First World War. And that was how it got its name, Coppa Asabo. However, because of the connection with that fascist era, the race was renamed after World War II to the Pescara Grand Prix. Couldn't possibly think why. After the war, Pescara hosted several Formula 1 races in the 1950s, but only in the 1957 edition actually counted towards the Formula 1 World Championship. Pescara was also the longest Formula 1 circuit ever, and it was the first circuit where they had to build an artificial chicane to reduce the speed at the start-finish. I wonder if Herman Tilk is proud. Before we get to number 5, I'd like to ask you something. Are you a nostalgic motorsport fan? Do you like videos from old racetracks? <laughs> Subscribe to this YouTube channel then. 
Don't forget to click on that notification bell so then you won't miss any of our other videos from racing circuits from the past and sometimes even from the present too. Oh, suit you. All right then, number five, Brooklands. The British Brooklyn circuit is seen as the first ever paved purpose-built motor racing circuit in the world. In the beginning of the 20th century, car races were usually held on public roads, but because the British law forbid speed contests on public roads, the entrepreneur Hugh F. Lock King came to the idea to build a permanent motor racing venue. In 1907, near the village of Weybridge, southwest from London, this venue was opened under the name of Brooklands. In 1908, an aerodrome was opened inside the circuit, which was one of the first in Britain too. Because of its great testing facilities, manufacturers from engines and planes built factories near and close by to the site. The Brooklyn circuit contained an oval with two high banked corners. The oval had a length of 4.55 kilometres or 2.76 miles and was driven anti-clockwise. Inside the oval was a separate start-finish straight and a road circuit called the Campbell circuit. The Campbell circuit could also be used in combination with a part of the oval too. There was also a so-called test hill, which was especially constructed for testing cars for manufacturers. In 1926, the first ever British Grand Prix was held at Brooklands, and a year again later, a Grand Prix at the Brooklands circuit. But when in September 1939 World War II broke out, motor racing stopped in Britain entirely. Because so many of the aircraft factories were based near the circuit, parts of the track were demolished for war production. In 1951, even more parts of the banking especially were demolished for a nearby airfield. What remained of the Brooklyn circuit now has the status of a monument, and parts of the old track can now be visited as part of the Brooklyn's Museum and Mercedes-Benz World. Number 4. Reims Go. In 1925, the first edition of the Grand Prix de la Manne was held in northern France, in the Champagne region. Ooh, sounds like somewhere I want to be. The race was held on the Circuit de bain Neroy, uh, which is a street circuit east of the city of Reims. For the 1926 edition, another track west of Reims near the city of Go was used. This was the first time that the infamous triangular circuit was used, and thus the circuit Reims Go was born. The street circuit was 7.82 kilometres long, or 4.86 miles. In 1932, it hosted the French Grand Prix, and again in 1938 and 39. After the war, it also hosted Grand Prix races, uh, including the French Grand Prix from 1950 onwards. During the years, permanent facilities were built, like the permanent pits, grandstands, a VIP building and a timekeeper house. The layout of the circuit also changed a few times. If you want to see all about these layouts, I strongly recommend our video, The Circuit, Reims Go, All Layouts. Despite being a popular venue and having great uh, permanent facilities, after the 1966 Grand Prix, Formula One abandoned Reims Go. And until 1972, the circuit was only used for other races, but then after that closed. The next decades, the buildings were left abandoned, but since 2004, the foundation Les Amis de Circuit de Go restored these buildings back to their former glory. Whilst it's not in use for racing, it's now there to be preserved as a motorsport monument from a bygone era. On our YouTube channel, you can find videos about these restoration works. I strongly recommend them because they're proper fascinating. Number three, Nürburgring. The construction of the Nürburgring in the German Eiffel Mountains started in 1925 as an unemployment relief project. The circuit opened in 1927 and had three different loops, a northern loop, a start and finish loop, and a southern one. The circuit in full was a combined length of 28.26 kilometers or 17.56 miles. In the years 1927, 1928 and 1929, the German Grand Prix was held on the full track. The footage you see now is from the abandoned Southern Loop. Since 1931, the German Grand Prix was held on a shorter combination of the Northern Loop, best known by the German name Nordschleife, and the start-finish loop only. However, this combination was still a whopping 228 kilometers or 14.17 miles in length. 
During the years from 1927 through to 1939, the German Grand Prix was held 11 times at the Nürburgring. After the war, the story continued, and the Nürburgring was on the Formula One Canada for many years. From 1950 through to 1976, the German Grand Prix was held 24 times at the Nürburgring, mostly on the Nordschleife in combination with the start and finish loop. But in 1960, the German Grand Prix was held, only for one time, on the Southern Loop in German Südschleife. However, after the 1976 race, with a terrible accident of Niki Lauda, the old Nürburgring was found to be just too dangerous, and the German Grand Prix moved to Hockenheim. In 1984, the Nürburgring opened again as a modern Grand Prix circuit. Therefore, they needed to demolish the full start and finish loop, and the northern part of the southern loop. The northern loop is still in full operation, and is used for tourist rides and touring car races. What's left of the southern loop is now public road with the remaining section left abandoned and used for access roads to parking. Number 2. Monza The famous Monza circuit opened in 1922 as a combination of a road circuit and a high banked oval. Both versions could be used together or separately, and the length of the combined circuit was exactly 10 kilometres, which equates to 6.2 miles. It hosted the Italian Grand Prix since the opening year of 1922, right the way up to 1938, and Monza hosted all of those Italian Grand Prix 14 times. In the beginning, the races were held on the full combination of the oval and the road circuit. However, after some grave accidents, chicanes were added and the other layouts were used instead. One of the most famous variants was the Florio circuit, which was a combination of the road circuit and the southern high banked corner of the oval. After the 1938 Italian Grand Prix, renovation works began. Part of the huge reconstruction was the demolishment of the high banked oval. After the war, the Italian Grand Prix returned to the new Monza circuit in 1949, but this time it was a road circuit. Since 1950, it's been part of the Formula One World Championship. During the 1950s, Monza wanted to return to its original concept of a combination of a road circuit and a high banked oval. So in 1955, a new Monza layout opened with a new oval, almost on the identical same site as the original. And that's the banking that you see being explored in this video. To give the circuit its exact length back to 10 kilometers once again, they introduced the famous Parabolica corner, known today as the Michele Avoretto corner. The full circuit was only ever used three times for Formula One Italian Grand Prix in 1956, 60 and 61. The high banked oval actually became more famous after it was used for the 1966 Formula One movie entitled Grand Prix. Since the 1969,000 km of Monza, the banked oval has never been used again, except for one instance, once a year for the Monza Rally. The rest of the year, it's simply there as a memory from the past, which can be explored legally. Just remember to take caution. So, who's number one? The Autodrome Linus Monterey is a racetrack near Paris, which was built by a private initiative from industrialist Alexandra Lambin. It was opened in 1924 as a high banked oval, and a year later a road circuit was opened out as an extension. The full combined length was 12.49 kilometres, or 7.76 miles. Just like the old Monza, they combined the road circuit with the high banked oval, but compared to the old Monza, here they only used one high banked corner of the oval for the combination with the road circuit. The first official race at Linus Monheret was in 1925 for the French Grand Prix. The race was won by Robert Benoist in his Delage. Sadly, the event was overshadowed by the fatal accident of Italian racing driver Antonio Ascari. Antonio Ascari was the father of the famous Alberto Ascari. After the 1925 Grand Prix, it hosted the French Grand Prix in 1927, 31, 33, 34, and to complete the set, 35. In 1939, the Linus Monheret circuit was sold to the French government. And after World War II, the government sold it in 1946 to the UTAC Group, who still owns the track to this day. 
The coolest thing about the Lernis Monterey circuit is that this classic racetrack is still in use, including its high banked oval. During the week, the oval and part of the road course is used for testing. But in the weekends, there are race events on the short version of the road circuit in combination with one of the high banked corners. However, you don't get the full experience of the banked oval corner. There are chicanes that interrupt your flow. So that's our top 10 of the pre-war Grand Prix tracks. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on that notification bell so that you don't miss anything in the future. For more information about classic race tracks that you may be able to visit, go over to the website www.circuitsofthepast.com. There you can also download a free ebook about 10 abandoned circuits that you can visit legally. For now though, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in our next video for other circuits from the past and sometimes from the present too. Toodle pip.